Thank you. Section 462 establishes an excise tax on providers of legal services. Uh, what it does is it adds a new chapter to the Internal Revenue Code and puts a 12% tax. Let me share my screen. So it creates a new, uh, new chapter, uh, so chapter 51 and section 5000D. It's an imposition of tax on the sale of legal services to 12% of the amount. So if you're getting free advice from a lawyer, then 12% of zero is zero. But if lawyers are selling their services, there would be a 12% tax in general paid by the person for whom this service is performed. Uh, we define legal service as a service involving advice to others in matters of law or representing them in court and provided by someone formally trained in the law and possessing a degree, degree from an inst institution that provides such instruction. There's a variety of different types of, of lawyers, but this is the, seemed like a definition that generally covered, covered that. We in uh, subparagraph four, we cover in-house counsel. So if you're not, if you're a lawyer who's not actually providing an invoice for your services, billing someone directly, your in-house counsel, the compensation for such employee is the part that is considered the sale price in terms of determining the tax in subsection A. And employees of a tax exempt organization are exempt from this paragraph. So if you're a lawyer working for a nonprofit, there is, there would not, this tax on your salary, not, there wouldn't be a tax on your salary because as a nonprofit, you're hopefully already serving the public good. And then uh, subparagraph five for the public good clarifies that this tax shall not apply to employees of any government body or agency or the purchases of legal services by a government body or agency. So again, if, if it's the government that is buying the legal services, the presumption is, is that they're serving the public good already by doing that. And so they would be exempt from, from this tax as well. And um, this would go into effect uh, July 1st, 2023. And the uh, flight of services performed after that. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I think that concludes my section for 462, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, yes. So um, just help me to remember, you said that, um, so this is how the vouchers are funded, and then everybody is given vouchers, or they're only given vouchers when they are arrested or, or when it's deemed that they need them. Yes, when they're arrested, we will get into that in sections 463 and 464 on uh the setup of the, the grant program and how they're distributed. Section 463 establishes the legal services trust fund. My screen again. And so we establish a trust fund in the treasury of the United States that collects all the money, uh, all the revenues that were raised from the previous, previous section through the tax on lawyers. I just feel like it's worth mentioning that lawyers are generally one of the least trusted and most disliked members of our society right up there with like uh, used car salesmen and, and uh, congressmen and so on and so forth. So we can, uh, we can harness their knowledge and uh, redirect it for the, the public good by putting this tax on them, putting it in a trust fund, and then using that tr trust fund to pay for the legal services grant program, uh, which we'll talk about in section 464. And um, that concludes my section for 463.